Yes, sir. Uh, yep. You know we love these guys right here. Uh, the BYU Cougars, Kalani Sataki. Now, there were questions about Sataki just a few years ago. It was not that long ago that we were talking about whether or not he was going to be able to make it as a head coach. And from what I gather from the reports that I have heard, he was actually offered the Oregon head coaching job and turned it down to stay at BYU. And I am so thankful that he did because he feels like the perfect fit for this football team. Last year went 10-3. and three. That's a loss in the bowl game to UAB. Uh, but, man, they had, a, they had a pretty tough schedule last year. Went 5-0 and oh against Pac-12 teams. Um, post-game win expectancy record last year was 8.73 and 3.27. So closer to 9-3 and three than 10-2, and two, which is what they ended up. But uh, projected SP Plus records got them at about 8.5 wins again, so they could get to 9 again. The schedule looks pretty difficult. Uh, you look at, we'll start off with the offense here. That's where they shined last year. They do lose running back Tyler Algier uh, and then their uh, center, James Impey, the quarterbacks were number 12 in QBR last season. Jaron Hall is is the stud of this group, uh, so long as you can keep him healthy. How does Jaron Hall fare without having Algier as his security blanket? That's what I want to see. The offensive line could be a top-five unit in the country. Wide receiver has multiple big-time options. Uh, Gunnar Romney, et cetera. Uh, Nakua, I believe, is uh, another wide receiver. Uh, they've got three seniors that played a combined 238 snaps at running back last year. So they got dudes. Algier declared early for the NFL draft. Uh, he did get drafted because he is, in fact, a stud. Uh, Chris, uh, the problem that I've got here is on defense. Uh, on offense, they were number four in PPA per drive. On defense, they were number 95. Like, they were giving up points to everybody last season. And you look at them, they were, they're number one in returning production on defense in the country. 93% comes back. Uh, we should see some improvement. Um the front seven, I think, is going to be pretty good. Defensive end, Batty, and the linebacker, Wilgar. Uh, those are your studs to look out for. Secondary, doesn't look heavy on talent, but they got nine guys back that played 200-plus snaps. Six of them played over 400 snaps. So I would imagine experience probably gets them to be a little bit better than number 95 in that metric. I, yep. give, me, give me a record here because I, I'm kind of high on this bunch, man. Um, I like them. I like them a lot. I've got them eight and four. I kind of wanted to make them nine and three. We are off on this one. We we both had Notre Dame nine and three. Uh, I've got BYU ten and two. Woo! Yeah. Okay. I've got them beating Baylor. I've got them beating Notre Dame. I've got them losing to Arkansas. I've got them losing to Oregon. But I think they win everything else. Okay. So, and, so those four games, I figured I think they can win one of them. But splitting them would be huge. Splitting them would be unbelievable. Yeah, I the the Notre Dame one, like I think it's a scheduling setup, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, BYU plays Utah State on a Thursday, the week before they play Notre Dame in Vegas. And Notre Dame has a bye week, but I just – I think that this team can be, I think they can whip Notre Dame, like at the line of scrimmage, which sounds bananas. But I just, I, I see something in this team that I think, I, you know what it is? I remember exactly why I marked that, because I think BYU is going to have the better quarterback. I think that's what it is. So I, I might, yeah. I, I could certainly see it. I just, there's something about this team that I always think that they're going to be worse than they actually are. And they, always overperform. Like the last three, four years under Sataki, they have been dynamite. And I just, I, I don't always see it. This time around, I was looking at the roster, looking at all the numbers, etc. And man, I think they're going to be really good. Like really, really good. So I'm, I'm going to roll with 10 and 2 on this. Um, and this, from what I understand, this will be the last year before they head into the Big 12. Uh, keys Big to the 12, season. I was about to say. Yeah. yeah. It, that's in I mean, hey, you get a win over Baylor this year. I mean, you'll have that to point to when you head into it next year. <laughs> so that's definitely good. Uh, biggest key is to fix the defense here. Secondary was young last year, but they are experienced. Uh, the offense going to need to find a replacement for the running back, but four offensive linemen back, plenty of weapons for Jaron Hall. Uh, they should maintain their consistency there. Uh, tough schedule. like, But, hey, again, like I think they can win 10 games. I think this could be a double-digit win season. 
So that is the way I'm rolling on that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.